I wanted to ask one uh, thing because you mentioned uh, that um, because of inflation and um, low rates, uh, you need to work more essentially to uh, attain, um, uh, to make a living really. Um, so work-life balance, not great. You know, many people work over the weekends and don't have uh, long holidays. Uh, I'm thinking, is it because maybe uh, most subtitlers work in this freelancing model, right? Would it be better uh, to change perhaps, uh, at least for some part of the market, um, to change the, um, the the whole business model? And uh, because companies complain about the talent crunch, et cetera. So if companies actually employed with a proper employment contract, I mean, um, some uh, subtitlers, would this uh, help? What do you think? There are cases where when subtitlers uh, and audiovisual translators in general are employed, but then again, uh, it's uh, what sort of pay you offer to those, uh, what sort of uh, what you expect from those uh, employees. Uh, I do know about these uh, situations in uh, the different uh, countries, but they are not always uh, successful because the uh, count companies, I'm talking about LSP, so language service providers, um, they always talk about cutting costs. So if they don't, if they don't see this as something that is cost effective, uh, they probably won't uh, employ uh, anybody. And then again, it's what sort of pay they are willing to offer for, uh, I don't know, 40 a week. Uh, so uh, yes, if you don't offer uh, a proper pace, subtitlers will, and in general, translators will leave. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, it, it, many people, it, I suppose, enjoy uh, the life of a freelancer, right? <laughs> Uh, you can enjoy it up to up to, uh, up to a certain point, but I think uh, many would also want maybe to be uh, employed and to have a better uh, work-life balance. But they are they, they are not offered uh, uh, these uh, contracts because, as I said, it's very one of the issues with uh, being a freelancer is that there is this insecurity. Uh, that you have all the time, uh, not just about how much you're paid, but when your next job is coming uh, uh, and whether you'll be able to work, what happens if you are ill, uh, what happens, for instance, uh, do you have the right for to uh, maternity leave? Is that something that is uh, allowed? In many cases, it's not. So you're only paid for the hours that you spend working. And that is, I think, super exciting if you're in your 20s, can be uh, very nice. But what, what I have noticed, for instance, in students is that uh, those who take a degree in uh, translation, uh, they're not so much interested anymore to go into audiovisual translation because they know today uh, the news spread fast and bad news spread, spread even faster, I think, is that this is this doesn't really offer uh, very good pay. And also you're expected to work uh, weekends, uh, nights. Uh, I read in one of the online forums least recently uh, one subtitle said, but actually, yes, the company is allowed to count weekends in as, you know, for the deadline when they do the scheduling they are allowed and i was thinking about what, who has allowed them to 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 count that i mean it's you obviously so uh you know this is where associations i think need to step in and say hey a weekend is a weekend and a holiday is yeah. a holiday